Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today, we are taking a look at Vectory. Vectory is a web-based 3D modeling and also a 3D augmented reality design platform. So, in case you want to make 3D stuff and you don't really want to do those on your PC, you're looking for a web solution. This seems to be something that is quite interesting that you can work with. At the same time, it offers you some very good rendering. You can collaborate across different team members and you can also play with a couple of files. And today we are taking a look at how this actually works, take a look at some of the cool things that have been improved over time since the last time we talked about the app. So getting started, there's going to be a link in the description that will take you over to Vectory.com and once you get there, you need to register. Registration is free and once you do that, it brings you over to your dashboard and within your dashboard, you might find a couple of template projects which you can work with or you can simply create a brand new one. So we're going to do that, create a brand new one and once we create this, we will take a look at the UI. So the UI looks fairly clean, all right? They've made a little bit of adjustment to some parts. Right now we have uh, some settings that enables you to turn on the dark mode. So just in case you want to see that. And right here, we also have a background stuff that can also help you get a much more cleaner viewport or a bit more dark viewport in case you don't really like the light. So with this done, the next thing which we need to take a look at is the overall settings. So right here is where you have your object. You create objects from here. You go over here, you do your editing. Your library lives here. So this library is a very good one. They've updated this. Previously used to load up somewhere like here. They had little materials. Now they have way more materials. And you have that there. If you want to drop a comment, maybe you're working as a team. You might also want to do that within a section like this. So this main part covers your creation process. Right here is where you can render, preview stuff if you want to view them for your web pages. And you can export and also share some content from here. So generally, this is a very simple to use tool. One of the questions, can you import stuff? Yes, you can. So if you go over to the menu section and click on the import button, you can literally import things. So right here we have Suzanne, Suzanne from Blender. We're just going to go ahead, export this one and bring it right in. And you can bring in a couple of files, FBX, GLTF, OBJ, STL, DAE, and some texture types can be brought in. So because we exported Suzanne as an FBX, we're going to click drag and drop that right over here. Now this will get loaded, it will fit the object to the scene and right here we have Susan. So from here we can start doing some very cool stuff. Now this has both modifiers and editors and you can easily work with this. So you have a couple of mesh editors that you can work with so you can get started with it. Meanwhile, before we get right into that, we might want to get maybe an infinite plane. So just in case you want to do some cool presentation, you can turn that on right here. Once you have things loaded, you can lock them, you can hide them. So I'm just going to click on this button to make sure that that one is invisible so that we don't get to see it. We're just going to focus on Suzanne. If we want to add some objects, we can do that as well. So maybe we're just going to throw in a simple box and just get that box right here. You would also notice that right here, we have a very interesting looking gizmo. Now this is more like a parametric gizmo that we can work with and how you navigate across your UI is very simple. With your middle mouse button, once you roll that in and out, that's how you zoom. If you click on your left mouse button and you move left and right, that's how you orbit and with your right mouse button, that is uh, basically how you pan across your stuff. Now, once you're selecting an object, by default, you would notice that you get to see the gizmo right down here. You can change that by going over to the transform and you can transform where you want the gizmo to be positioned at any given point in time. The same thing happens with your local and your global positioning of stuff because right here, if you want your transform to be global, you click right here. If you want it to be local, you can click right here and click on all these buttons to reset the position of what you want. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and take that out and bring in the torus. Torus are quite interesting to work with. And we're just going to take a look at this torus right here. Now, once you bring in an object by default, you can make changes to that object right over here. So if I click and drag, I can easily make those changes. And the same thing happens right here. If I click and drag, let's do that. Okay, so we can also make changes like so, and we can do the same thing right over here. So at this point, you can see that we can make easy changes from here. What about subdividing? If you like to add modifiers to your stuff, or maybe you want to convert your object to become a geometry that you can work with, those are also pretty easy. So let's take a look at adding modifiers, then we'll talk about how you can edit your mesh. So if I click on this button right here and go over to this section, you notice that we have a couple of modifiers. Right here as well, we have a couple of deformers and from here we have the UV. We also have grouping just in case you like to group stuff. And right over here, we can simply import and that's the shortcut key for that. Right here, we have several kinds of light, 
cameras, we have the image plane to bring in images, and from here we have our 3D text. So let's take a look at subdividing. So once you have your object selected, go over to this section, okay, where you have your generate, and you can click on subdivision surface. And once you do that, automatically this becomes subdivided. Right now, this is at the first subdivision level. So to increase this, you need to come right here and we can increase this by three and that should give us a pretty cool result. So let's wait for it. Cool. Now, one thing to take out of this is everything is happening directly on the web. So right on your iPad, right on your mobile device, you can easily, and even for those using Chromebook, you don't have access to some sort of software. You may want to take a look at this one and see how this can help you get your modeling up to speed. So with this done, let's take a look at some other thing. Once you select an object and you want to start editing that object, you need to convert that to geometry. Now, if you don't convert this to geometry, there is no way that you can start working with it. So what we need to do is click right here, convert this to geometry, and automatically we can start working with it. You go over to the edit section right here. You can now simply start selecting stuff. Now, how you also make selection is very similar to how you make selections in 3D Studio Max. And this goes for your component selection. So if I press one on the keyboard, I can now easily select the vertices. If I press two on the keyboard, I can select the edges and three on the keyboard to select the faces. All right, so I can do that, double click. And right now I can click on the loop to select that entire loop. And for those who like to do some extruding, tap E exactly how you do that in Blender. And once I click and tap E on the keyboard, I would get this and click and be able to do something like that. The same thing happens if I would like to also bevel, just press B on the keyboard. And right now I can easily bevel across the entire stuff. So this way it is easy and exciting for those who would want to start creating some pretty cool stuff like this. And once you're done playing with all of the tool sets that you want to play with, just simply go back and click on object to jump back to the object. And once you want to go back to start making that edit, go over to edit and you can start making some edits. So if I double click at this point, you notice I have this, click on the loop and I'll be able to have that loop. And if you want to gain access to more modeling tools, what you need to do is you need to go over here and click on the mesh tools. Now, once you click on the mesh tool, you'll notice we have the smooth, the wealth, and we have Spherify. Just in case you want to make a surface rounder, we'll have the Quadrify and so on and so forth. So let's also do something interesting as well. So I like having a couple of um, bevels. So let's also make some more bevels right here. So let's have that and right about there. Okay, so let's do that here as well. Let's grab this. Actually, let's do that from this point. Select, double tap, make that loop, click right here and get this happening. All right. So with all of this done, you might be wondering, okay, so is there anything more you can do with tools like this? Yeah, you, there's actually a lot more stuff that you can do. One of the things that makes sense for me is the fact that, you know, it has some of these um, generators that you can work with. So if you like to make radial array, linear array, or whatever kind of array, you can easily do those ones here. So if I click over here, I can easily make a radial array and you can see that and because this array is working based off one particular object, once I click on any of these transformers, as this is for move, and this is for rotate, and this is for scale, I can easily scale this all the way down to have that, you know, circular array, click on the array, and I can increase these as much as I want. And this way, I've easily made that happen. Something else which makes a lot of sense as well is I can now select and click on subdivision. So once I have that subdivision, I have all of this done, and I'm ready to go. And for those looking for deformers, there are a couple of deformers that you can find here and you can simply go ahead and explore this. Now, real quick, let's take a look at the library. Now within the library, there are a couple of things that we can play with. So I can select any of these ones and go over to any of the material collections, find the one I want. So for example, I could go over to this and click on red and assign red to all of that. That looks cool. Okay, so I can also do the same thing here. I can select Suzanne and click right here to assign this material over to Suzanne right here. That doesn't look so cool. So let's find something else. Maybe we can get something a bit more brighter than okay. So that looks good. Let's position this one right there. Now, for those who might be wondering, 
okay so we've got to see some modeling tools all right they're good we've also got to see some deformers what about boolean boolean works perfectly fine so exactly the same way you feel boolean would work in tools like blender that is exactly how boolean works right here so if i click on this button and go over to where we have the sphere i can also scale this down over to a point like so move this to the position where i want it to be and at this point i would like to use this for boolean so what do we do make sure i don't have anything selected go all the way to where i have the boolean and maybe i want to do a simple boolean subtract and what i need to do is select the object all right so let's find suzanne select the object that i want put that right here and then select the sphere and put that right over there and this way we would have the boolean so if i simply select right now you get to see that nothing really happens but if we go in and change the order that we have this and select the boolean extract one more time you would now see that we have that boolean happening there so if you would like to create boolean this way is going to be very you know nice and easy for you to do that so let's turn this one off so that we have what we're looking for and let's snap to the front and have this there lights works the way you expect lights to work go over to the light section and drop a spotlight go right there click and drag this all the way up and you have yourself a spotlight click on the camera to throw yourself into the camera space and you can simply switch over to the camera whenever you want by simply adding the camera selecting that click on this button right here and you are right now in the camera view and within the camera view you can position your shot or frame your shot how you want it to be and let's get that infinity background which isn't really infinity but it's good so we can position that one right over there and for the rendering we can now easily go over to where we have the render and start taking a look at that or you can click on this button right here and simply click on the start preview so this is more like your interactive preview render but it's not really as interactive interactive okay so this is more like that and you can take a look at you know the medium quality low quality and also the high quality rendering now right now with the high quality rendering you can notice that we have too much spotlight so we can drop that one down about the point like that actually let's change the color to something more fun and let's take a look at it so right now that looks even way better for those that would like to export their models once they're done you can go over to the export section and export this as either stl or obj and if you like to also share this you can go over to the share section and share this on all of these other platforms including sketchfab and that's definitely going to be about it if you want to read more about this i'm going to put a link to the documentation where you can read more about this and get up to speed and for those wondering how expensive is this this actually is for free except maybe you would like to get a monthly subscription so that you can unlock some other features then you might have to pay 12 dollars for that and for those who like to join the community there is some sort of active community going on right here and you might want to come through take a look at some of the things they're talking about and see if this tool is for you and that's definitely going to be about it if you want to test out the ar we haven't tried that yet but we'll probably be doing that very soon so go ahead and try this one out and tell me what your thoughts are in the comment section and also go ahead and take a look at this too and see how it works tell me what you guys think about this one and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace